it's Sandy. I am going to show you how to how I make a strawberry pie. Um, the things that you're going to need. I'm going to cheat today because I just don't feel like making an app uh, a pie crust. <laughs> so I'm going to be using my tender flake crust. I always use a deep dish, and you get two in a package. Okay, um, then you're going to need obviously strawberries. These ones are from a farm and these ones are from the store. So I ate too many of these so that's why I don't quite have enough for a pie. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Um, and then I need, you need vanilla, pure vanilla. You'll need some ground clove some cinnamon, some sugar, and some, um, uh, la, 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 la. <laughs> what do you call this? Cornstarch. <laughs> okay, and you'll also need some um, butter, preferably butter that is frozen so that you can make it into chunks, which I did not bring out. So I'm just going to bring out my water. Okay. So what you're going to do first is you're going to take out your pie plates. Okay. And they come out like this. You're going to put one aside. And then the other one is going to be the top of your pie. You're going to let these sit out for a little bit. You don't want them to get too warm, otherwise they, uh, they won't work properly. Okay, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to chop up all of your strawberries. Now, I like to chop my, these ones, the ones from the farm are pretty small, so I may just chop these in half. If you've got the larger ones, then you're probably gonna wanna chop them, oh, there's my oven. Oh yeah, preheat your oven to 400. Um, yeah, if they're the bigger ones, you might wanna do them into quarters, bite-sized pieces, basically. Okay, and you're gonna put all of these in a bowl. And you're gonna want them in a large enough bowl. Now, you can do this with strawberry and rhubarb. What you're gonna want is you're gonna want uh, one cup, I think it's one cup, uh, one pound of strawberries and one pound of rhubarb, which comes out to about a cup a piece. Uh, depends on your size of your um, pie crust. If you're not doing the deep dish pie crust, you won't need as many. Okay, George doesn't like rhubarb, so that's why I'm just doing strawberry. Oops, I'm supposed to be cutting these in half. <laughs> so just um, get these all cut up and that's all I'm doing, just like, just pieces like that, okay? And get them all into your bowl, and I will see you back when you have them done. Okay, so I've cut up my strawberries. So one pound, you're gonna want two pounds of, if you're using just strawberries, you're gonna want two, uh, one pound, which is two cups. Okay, so if you're doing a different fruit with it, like blueberries or, or um, raspberries or whatever then you're going to want one cup of each okay so the total will be two pounds uh, two pounds or two cups okay or one pound two cups ugh, ugh, ugh. you know what I mean it's two cups <laughs> okay so I think I've got enough here now what you're going to do is you're going to get another bowl 
and you're going to do your dry ingredients. Okay. Um, so first off, now my strawberries, because they're from a farm, they are really, really sweet. Like really sweet. And so normally I would say it's three quarters of a cup of um, sugar. But I think because mine are so so sweet right now, I'm going to only do half a cup of sugar. That sounds like a lot of sugar, but if you've got berries that are from the store and they aren't very sweet, then uh, you're going to want the sugar because they're going to be very tart otherwise. Okay. So there you go, there's the sugar. And then you're going to want three tablespoons of cornstarch. So. So there's my tablespoon. And I do flat tablespoons, not heaping. Two. Okay. I'll just wipe, wipe off my hands here. Okay, now to that, you're going to add vanilla, a half teaspoon of vanilla. Nope, nope, wait, sorry. You're doing your dry ingredients, not your wet. <laughs> Let's try that again. For your clove, clove is extremely strong. So you can either omit it, but if you're going to use it, only use an eighth of a teaspoon of, uh, of that and make sure it's a flat teaspoon. Okay. Okay, and then for the cinnamon you're going to do a half a teaspoon nope sorry quarter a quarter teaspoon okay okay so quarter teaspoon of cinnamon okay and then you're going to mix those all together. Mix them really well. And try and get out clumps. But it's not all that important to get them out because it'll all melt in together anyway. Okay. There you go. Okay, now into your strawberries you're going to put your vanilla. So you're going to do a half teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. Now at this point, if you want to, you can even put in a little bit of um, lemon juice, which I forgot to bring out. You can either use real lemon juice or you can just use the uh, liquid can or liquid uh, jug. And I just put in a splash. So I just take my lid, put some in my lid, and there you go. And pop your uncle. Okay, and then you're going to want a spoon. Okay, now you're going to sprinkle the powder on your strawberries and leave a little bit in the bowl because you're going to want to take your pie crust, the one that you're going to be putting your pie in, and you're going to want to put a little bit, oops, a little bit of it sprinkled on the bottom of your pie crust. Okay, 
That's just to absorb some of the juices. Okay. There we go. I'm going to mix all this up. Mix it really well. So that all the strawberries and fruit are covered. Make sure you get it all off the bottom because it will stick to the bottom. Okay. There we go. And then you're going to bring your pie crust over and you're going to put it in your crust. Make sure that you get it all around the edging. Like just pack it in the edge. Just all the little nooks and crannies. Smells so amazing. There we go. Oh, it smells so good. It looks amazing too. Okay. You want to make sure, whoops, runaway strawberry. You're going to want to make sure that. It's all along the edges because you don't want any pockets of no strawberry. That would be terrible. Okay, and don't worry if you think that it's up really high because it will liquefy a little bit and it will shrink. There. There you go. Now you're going to take your butter and you're going to cut chunks of butter. Just random sized chunks and just place them all around your pie. Okay, right, just like that. Okay, all right, and then you're going to take your other pie crust, this one. And you're going to flip it on top of this one. Okay. And you're going to gently push the top of the pie pan so that it comes out. This is kind of niggly. You have to kind of work it out. There you go. Okay, and then you kind of put it into place. Okay. Then you're going to take the edges and you're going to smoosh them together. that I forgot to tell you is a smidge of milk, like a couple teaspoons. 
of milk. All right, because we're gonna spread this on top of the pie so that it's um, it browns. Okay, so we're just gonna put a little bit on the top. Make sure it doesn't pool. Put it along the edges. Quick and easy. Okay, that's all you need. And then you're going to take your knife and you're going to put little breathe hole lines in the top. You don't have to put too many. I usually, oops, put four like this. And then I just put a couple in between, just one little smooch in between. A smooch? What's a smush? <laughs> okay. And there you go. It's done and ready to go into the oven. Okay, and I'll show you what it looks like when it, oh, uh, you need to put it into a 400 degree oven for 45 minutes. If you start to see the crust, uh, the outer ridge of the crust is starting to brown too fast, you can put a piece of tin foil around it just to cover it so that the rest of it uh, has time to cook. But what you're looking for is a um, a really nice golden brown. Okay, so we'll see you when we come back. One thing that I can't stress enough is that these pies, the juices will be flowing. And so there is a chance, and usually it happens to me nine times out of ten, that the juice will overflow. So you want to make sure that it's in a pan, like a cake pan or something, a cookie sheet with tin foil on top of it. Make sure you put the tin foil on top because if this juice gets onto your pan, it is a bugger to get off your pan. So make sure that you do that, otherwise you're going to have a world of mess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Another disclaimer that I would like to say is please, please, please be extremely careful when you're making fruit pies because of the fact that when these pies are cooked, the juice will congeal and you do not want that on your person and you do not want it on anybody else's person. Uh, I knew a friend whose mom was making a lemon meringue pie and a fruit pie and unfortunately the child got underneath her as she was taking it out of the oven and the pie went on the child and burned her third degree burns uh, on 20% of her body. This is no joke, right? Like this stuff as beautiful and wonderful as these pies are, you need to make sure that there's no one in the kitchen. No pets, no kids, no nobody. Because when you take that pie out of the oven and you get it into a safe place, um, you need to be able to have that, move, that, that safe movement, okay? Because I don't wanna see anybody getting hurt. Uh, so just a note, um, yeah. Okay. Okay, everybody. So here it is. Um, one thing I will say is, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have one of these mesh racks, like it's cookie sheet um, cooling rack, then 
I would put this maybe in your cookie sheet uh, with the tin foil as well because if you don't put something above it the the tin foil will um, have all the juices on it and then the pie plate will stick to the juices <laughs> so um, yeah so if you've got a rack like this that it, it's ri rises above the um, the actual pan that would probably be better but if not you know in a pinch the tin foil will work just let it cool before you move it because the juices are hot in there and they are flowing all over so if you try to pick this up the juices are going to come sloshing out and you're going to end up getting burned so i just took this out of the oven not too long ago it's um but you can still feel the heat coming out of it and it takes a long time for this to cool down so um <clears throat> so yeah so just sit it on your counter let it cool completely and then put it in the fridge and let it cool in the fridge because then everything will really congeal if you try to cut this open right now it's just going to be a big sloppy mess okay so I hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see what you've made uh, with this and you know be creative you know use different types of berries you can use pretty much any kind of berry and have some fun with it okay so thanks for watching and I will talk to you guys soon bye